My brothers and sisters, I wish to sincerely thank you that uh, you accorded it to us while we were unceremoniously and unconstitutionally detained. I wish to thank you really for your support. It's your support that uh, forced this unconstitutional government to take us to before the courts of law and uh, allow us to get bail for that support. But unfortunately, uh, on the 24th of June, one Jack Mwimbu, the Minister of uh, Internal Security, has continued to dish out untruths on the, on the Zambian uh, people. You know, the minister should have come out in the open and he told us what has transpired from the time that uh, the Honorable MP for Petauke was taken into the hands of the state. Mind Jack Mwimbo that uh, the president passed a vote of no confidence in his work. The president clearly said that the police have failed the country. He went as far as saying that uh, he will invoke the unmentionable clause to actually uh, get the army on the street. That's a clear vote of no confidence in the minister. Jack Mwimbu, when he opens his mouth, on, creates more problems for himself and for the government. Because he comes up empty, empty as empty as they come. He says to the people that, in fact, a good Samaritan found the vehicle. He does not tell us who that good Samaritan is. Whereas on the other side, when the sisters found JJ in Kafue, to the relatives to be able to pick him up. But Jack Mwimbu even lies that he's a police who found uh, JJ. I want J Jack Mwimbu, this lying minister, to tell us one thing. Doesn't he know that all of us know that in Ibex Hill, every night there's police patrol? What happened to the police patrol on that night that a good Samaritan from nowhere arrived, went and reported to the police, the police went to site and drove the vehicle? I want Jack Mwimbu to tell us, the people of Zambia, two things. Who is this good Samaritan? Who is this police officer who, without training, went to the site and drove the vehicle? My issue is, how could a trained police service go to a potential crime scene and mess up the evidence by driving? Jack Mwimbu continues to tell us one lie after another, one lie after another, and we are tired of this lying. We all know that uh, the minor soko aired a video, including uh, one Kawan and his colleague, they said that uh, uh, Honorable MP for Petauke was able to walk. No wonder this same Jack Mwimbo and his police force have stopped all manner of the patient. Now the suspect whom they've turned the suspect, they don't want anyone to know what is happening. But we know from the time he was found to this date, his health condition is not the same. Why is Jack Mwimbu all of a sudden and his police stopping people and destroying images of what the situation is? Because Jack Mwimbu must tell the nation what is it that they are scared of that they don't want the ordinary eye, the ordinary citizen in Petauke, in Akonde, in Monze to know about what is being restrained from taking pictures of the Honorable MP for Petauke. So, uh, Mr. Mwimbu, I want to remind you, stop mentioning my name because you have more issues to address than the issues of telling people that don't listen to Edith Nawaku. Yes, they may not listen to me, but I have specific questions. Why did you wake up at midnight to go and camp at Midlands, a Midland Clinic? What was your IO? Where on earth in this country 
Have we seen more than 70 people at a hospital? Why did you go and allow your police when you are in the same precinct? This is your colleague. You could easily have gone and persuaded the Honorable MP and say, my friend, I want to take you to our government facility. But you allowed the police to be dragging him like a common criminal from, from a CT scan. All these are questions which you must answer. During your tenure, President, for passing a vote of no confidence, on your leadership in the police, they are all over. They don't listen to anyone. When you talk to this officer, he says, I'm getting orders from higher authority. We don't know how many centers of power there are in the police. Is it in the minister's office? Is it in the inspector general's of police? Is it at state, state house? You need to resolve these issues. Which issues are raising no confidence in the conduct and performance of the police, but more so in adding no leadership to the Zambia Police Service. You have more questions to answer. You can't just be telling us, no, it's PF, no, they found a note, no, this person called the police. Tell us that person so that we take that person to task. Report that person who found the vehicle and called the patriotic front to the police. People have been mentioned. If the mention is Edith Nauk, you come and camp here. The note said, been well. Before you could house, what is stopping you from questioning the so-called Good Samaritan? It's because you know who the so-called Good Samaritan is. For me, I just want two questions answered. Who is the Good Samaritan? Mention him. Is it the police? And secondly, which member of the police service from either Ibex Hill or from Central Police drove the vehicle from the site of a possible scene of Ibex Hill Police Station? Is it the officer in charge for Ibex Police Station? Is it the patrol staff who are usually patrolling that road? Because every night there's a patrol vehicle on that road. What happened to the patrols that are conducted on a daily basis did we have taking pictures become an offense? I think, uh, Mr. Mwimbu, you have more questions to answer. Keep quiet. And if you don't have answers because they are beyond you, just keep quiet. And don't start uh, creating more problems for yourself and for the government. Because that's exactly what you're doing. And I want the president to intervene because when the president say arrest JJ, when these uh, people on SOCO is instructing them, over the indebtedness of Mopani to Glencoe. So it's a matter of shock when the Honorable Minister goes to Parliament and says he's asking for a supplementary budget to pay Glencoe. We need answers, friends. We need answers. What has happened? You are telling us that you need supplementary budget. The people of Zambia must pay more money to pay Glencoe. But you're not telling us the full story. How much money did Grenko make from the time that the mine was taken over by ZCCM IH, in, in short, by the government? Because these people were being given the copper to sell. How much copper did they sell? What was the balance of money owed to them? These are the simple questions. You take the slag dump you give to Jubilee Metals, and you tell us, no, all the indebtedness is taken. We go to Pakra, and we see that actually the government and the new owners of, of Mopani are actually lending money to Mopani. So we get confused, the Honorable Minister. Your mathematics is not adding. This is a time when ideally we should be talking about the agricultural season. You get the president to you get the Minister of Mines is talking about something else. You get the Minister of Police is talking about something else. None of them are addressing the issues that affect the Zambians at the core of their livelihood. The load shedding. People are having one hour of electricity. How do you expect them to meet obligations? What?
us. They've never been in protection. ineptitude. Now, having realized your ineptitude, you need to retract back and stop feeding us on lies. The question is, how do we resolve this? To resolve this, you need to cut exports. There's absolutely no way that you can come to us and say there's no food, there's no power, there's no diesel, there's nothing. And we have told you, yes, there's a problem. Now that is a problem, stop playing politics with the lives of the How can we resolve this? You cannot resolve this by giving out 6 million hectares of land in Luapula. Who told you that you can give our inheritance to foreigners? Every land on earth, the Bible says, belongs to a people. That's why the 12 tribes of Israel each were allocated a location for themselves. Even those who died in the Bible, they were said to have been buried in the land of their ancestors or land bought for our ancestors and our forefathers. You want to give us to foreigners, give it to foreigners. Are we able to go to Zimbabwe and get land? Are we able to go to India and get land? Are we able to go to Vietnam and get land? Are we able to go to Mozambique as Zambians and say, can we have two hectares of land? It's impossible. It's impossible. We know that in some countries, you can't even get to buy a flat because only nationals buy flats. When you click, that he can give 134,000 hectares in Impica to foreigners to do exploration without the consent of chiefs because his president he has, can consent to that. Now, when, is, when Zambians go there to get a small-scale mining license, they are told, no, you have to go to these people who have the large concession of 134,000 hectares to consent that you get maybe 50 hectares to do small-scale mining. We, as the Zambians, we, as the people, the Visas, the Namwangas, the Tongas, we, as the Lenges, must go to foreigners to get consent to our own entitlement, to our own inheritance. I think this is an abomination on this government. Reverse your steps. Now, you've relation in Mpika. Uh, it's embarrassing to even mention that now you want to give 6 million hectares in Wapula for creating heaven on earth. We tried in, in Chisamba, and the people said no. And even today, the chiefs in Wapula province advice is this. This is uh, July. Let us talk about a possibility of rain falling. Let us talk about God forgiving us our sins and giving, giving us rain and start to plan for the agricultural season. It's only when we do that that we can do something. That's one. Should it rain, what are we going to do? Where is the plan that we are putting in place as a nation to avert further hunger, because at the point where we are, people are starving. Wakateka. Imen mufumemu state house. Go to Kalikilik. See how your people who voted for you are suffering. Don't. This is a time for anyone who calls themselves a leader to step out, go in the people's villages, go in the people's homes, and ask for wisdom. Ask for advice. What should we do? That's exactly what a leader does. You can't cover yourself by these people around you who are cheating you, who are telling you nothing. The likes of Jack Mwimbu, they are not giving you anything. In the end, nepotism, favoritism, because if you have friends whom you've grown up with from school, from the village, what, you, you have the same knowledge. You need to pollinate your knowledge with people who are not your closest friends so that they can advise you properly. At this point in time, the church needs to come out in the open 
and advise this president that the path which the nation has taken is not a path to development, but a path to destruction, a path of vengeance, a path of no return. And I think that anyone in leadership must know that this crossroad must be crossed. This crossroad requires sitting down, negotiating, motivating our people to find hope. I expect that this time, instead of these ministers just running around in circles, they should be is being, to, is being used to build up weirs and dams. That's the only solution. We need water resource management. We need a very, very active program for water resource management. Because, as I have mentioned in the past, agriculture is not rain. Agriculture is not equal to rain. There are countries on earth like Israel who never get still self-sufficient in food. From the Sea of Galilee, our friends in the Holy Land are able to feed themselves. We have more than the Sea of Galilee. We have 62% of the waters in the Sadiq region. But it looks, it looks like we only have 10% of the knowledge in the Sadiq region. Because even countries which were behind us, like Tanzania, are way ahead of us. As a people, let us sit down and address issues of development, issues of progress. Are we the hindermost? No, it's just that our leaders seem to concentrate on issues which do not put food on the table. And for me, I want to advise that uh, when you reach a point like this, where you don't even have power in 24 hours, when your people are sleeping without food, when you have no diesel, you have no fuel, when people are feeling hopeless, the only hope they can get is if it's not providing leadership, therefore the people must get that leader out of office. And it's that which people are talking about. So much, but he has delivered zero. Do you want to go in the annals of the history of Zambia as a president who delivered nothing? Or do you want to go in the annals of history as a president who did something? Your concentration on foreign table, your concentration on foreigners is simply dividing the country. At any one time in our republic, this country's happiness was at its highest when people in the villages had a bumper crop and were able to sell it. At any point in our history, people's happiness was at its lowest, like this time, when they are not able to eat, they can't find food, they can't see fuel, they can't get on the bus. You find people walking from Kwa George to go to the airport to work. And I think that ministers should stop playing politics with the lives of people. I thought that I should advise you, and uh, if you want to take this advice, you should take it. But the way it is, this is the first time in our history that you have a president who doesn't talk to the opposition. The only talk is to take them to court every day. So we talk at court, we go back to our homes, this is a person who doesn't even want to talk to church leaders. He selects. This is the president who has authorized the police to go into the sanctuaries where God resides. You know, when we are hungry in a week, when we are hopeless, we want to turn to God and say, thank you, God, for give, giving us a country called Zambia. We still have peace. And we still look forward to your mercy to be done for this nation. But if we are even chased from our churches, where do we go? We can't even go to the president and say, relatives and friends. It's really a tragedy. And I think that some of these ministers must just be relieved and sent to the back bench. They are not worth it. We have pointed out ministers, but they seem to be his best friends. I don't know. The, where we come from, they say, Ako temenwe eka kusho mchene. Alaba minister mwa temwa wa kateka. Eva kamikusho mchene. Awewe neva jakila mwimbu wa Eva mikusho mchene. Because he's not providing leadership to the Zambia police. So start firing the minister.
And if you fire the minister and put a capable uh, man to manage the police, you will see that the men and women in uniform will give you sterling performance. They've never failed. They've been to rely. They've been trained. But it is these ministers who open their mouths like empty tins, who are failing the nation, who are giving a bad name to Zambia. Because when the international community looks and says, ah, Zambia is a police state. So I thought I should advise that uh, Jack Mwimbu keep quiet because you don't seem to have any answers.